God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Thank you for y'all. Uh, we put out a response, a plea, I should say. We put out a plea for flood buckets and, and hygiene kits, and you guys responded well. Um, we probably had 15 or so flood buckets, and we probably had about 50 hygiene kits. Um, as uh, Micah and Gabe drove this 24-foot Penske truck over Blood Mountain. I'll give them credit. Uh, and they spent the night with us, too. If you're worried about the state of the church, don't. Because two young men, one 28 and 24, their hearts are on fire for Jesus. And we thank God that you know we've got future generations that are responding to God's call. So continue to, to pray for God to do that in, in the hearts of our young people. And especially, uh, young. Keep, keep Mike and Gabe in your prayers. They left yesterday morning. Some of you that were here early, you saw the big 24-foot truck. They left here, went to Conover, North Carolina. And then they thought they were going to muck out a church in Tryon. Uh-uh. So they unloaded at Conover, and they got reloaded, and they went down to Hendersonville. They're spending the night there. They're going to worship there. Then they're going to go back. I don't know where they're going today, but they're going to get reloaded again and take another pile of supplies. So, again, they were only doing the one thing, and as Sally and I talked to them, just, just let the Spirit guide you. And... and the, uh, again, there will be some posts going up. Uh, I plan to put an article in the newspaper. Uh, I, again, uh, thank you. Thank you for responding. But again, as I reminded them, I will remind you, this is not a one and done. Uh, we're going to continue to do this in, in response to help the people. By the way, how many are, do we have any refugees from Florida? <laughs> Okay. Uh, again, we thank God that I, I pray that you were spared. If there's any way in which we can help you all uh, with, with anything, uh, again, as you were able to get out, and our prayers are, are for those that are recovering from that uh, circumstance. Uh, but again, we're, we're thankful for your safety and, and a chance to worship with us today to receive the gifts that God gives to us uh, through the word and through his people. A couple of other announcements. Uh, we've got the Critters and Kids event coming up in two weeks. Uh, we need people to bake and bag cookies or brownies, six to a bag. We also need people to man the different games that are going to be there. Please see Sally uh, if you can do that. Uh, and that's going to be a great event uh, for us to invite the community uh, and interact with them. And finally, the, uh, the monthly F4 dinner, uh, the sign-up sheet for that, it, it's in two weeks. It's always the fourth Friday. That's why it's F4. And there's another couple of foods and fellowships with those Fs uh, as we put it all together. But please sign up for that so they can properly uh, prepare uh, for, the, for that meal. You're in the wrong seat. <laughs> uh, again, as we are progressing through uh, Vicar's uh, apprenticeship, I guess, um, we, are, we are now to he where he's preaching two Sundays a month. We've got it planned out through the end of the year. Not just the end of the church year, the end of the year. Hold your hats because he's preaching Christmas Eve. <laughs> the bar is there. <laughs> uh, we, have, we truly have been blessed uh, through this partnership that he and I have had, but the partnership that he and his family have had with this congregation, God is truly blessing us in, in amazing ways, and I look forward to hearing his word. He and I... He and I study the word together on Mondays, whoever is preaching, 
and it's always interesting to hear how that study together uh, comes out in the, the preaching of the word. So make note of the pictures on the bulletin cover. Which one are you? <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> well, as God has gathered us together on this day, uh, he's gathered us together to receive what he desires to give to us through his word and his people. Uh, we take some time in prayerful meditation. Let the spirit guide your prayer. Use one of the hymn verses, uh, especially that, uh, the, the sermon hymn uh, on page seven is very, very pointed toward uh, Vicar Tim's message, but as, as the Holy Spirit molds and shapes our hearts and minds for worship, we do so as the candles are being lit and the prelude is being played. Through the waters of our baptism, we truly have encountered a Lord and Savior whose mercies are greater, greater than anything that we have done, uh, because again, all that we do has been blessed through our baptism. So we remember that as we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite the congregation to please stand for the singing of the hymn.
If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. house and for all who offer here their worship and praise let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. help save comfort and defend us gracious Lord Amen. glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, whose grace always precedes and follows us, help us to forsake all trust in earthly gain and to find in you our heavenly treasure. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The congregation may be seated.
The Old Testament reading for the 21st Sunday after Pentecost is from Amos chapter 5. <coughs> Seek the Lord and live, lest he break out like a fire in the house of Joseph and devour it with none to quench it for Bethel. O you who turn justice to wormwood and cast down righteousness to the earth, they hate him who reproves at the gate, and they abhor him who speaks the truth. Therefore, because you trample on the poor, and you exact taxes of grain from him, you have built houses of hewn stone, but you shall not dwell in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink their wine. For I know how many are your transgressions and how great are your sins. You who afflict the righteous, who take a bribe and turn aside the needy in the gate. Therefore, he who is prudent will keep silent in such a time, for it is an evil thing. <coughs> Seek good and not evil that you may live so the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you, as you have said. Hate evil, and love good, and establish justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. The epistle is from Hebrews chapter 3. Take care, brothers lest there be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart, leading you to fall away from the living God. But exhort, but exhort one another every day, as long as it's called today, that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. For we share in Christ, if indeed we hold our original confidence firm to the end, as, it's, as it's, it is said, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. For who were those who heard and yet rebelled? Was it not all those who left Egypt led by Moses? And with whom was he provoked for 40 years? Was it not those who sinned? whose bodies fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but to those who were disobedient? So we see that they were unable to enter because of unbelief. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your father and mother. And he said to him, teacher, all these I have kept from my youth. And Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, you lack one thing. Go Sell all that you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. 
disheartened by the saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. This is the gospel of the Lord. congregation may be seated. I'd like to welcome the children to come forward for a children's message this morning. And we're going to go on a hike. Well, you guys are going to be, uh, you can have a seat up here, but we're going we're gonna to pretend. We're going to pretend this morning. So have a seat right over here, guys. Right on over here. There you go. Leah, I would love for you to help me. Can you help me with this morning? So normally when we go on hikes, you know, there's a lot of hikes that we can go on in the mountains and go explore things. And we have a lot of people here in our congregation that like to go explore. We like to take some things with us on the hike, right? We like to take some things with us. So this morning, we're going to pretend like we're going on a hike and it's after breakfast, it's before lunch, and it's only two miles. Okay, two mi you go for a two mile hike? We've done this before. Okay, we can do this. We've got this. All right. So, you know what? I'm thinking we need to, to maybe bring some supplies with us on our hike. So I've got your, your fun little unicorn backpack here. And I went ahead and filled it with, let's see, some things I wonder if we're going to need on the hike. Let's see. We've, we've got a slinky here. We've got some uh, bubbles. We've got a few books with us. Uh, and, oh, Melody, you've let her borrow your fun fuzzy slippers, even though she's got shoes on her feet already. All right, we're set. Can you go ahead and, can you, can you wear this backpack for me? All right, you put that on. There we go. Okay, how's that doing? You feeling okay? All right, you know what? We might need more than just this backpack this morning, because you never know when you're going to get hungry on a two-mile hike. So we're going to have to have our cooler with us. Okay, can you go ahead and hold that cooler? Okay. Is that okay? Showing off your muscles? All right, so you're set. We got a cooler. You know, I'm just not satisfied because maybe I think we need to be safe while we're on the hike. Why don't we put our. So we've got our unicorn backpack, our unicorn helmet. Uh, let's see. Oh, you know what? We might come across some flies, so we need that. Let's see. You know, maybe the hike will get boring, so you want to get your pillow. Maybe take a little rest in between. You know what? We've got to entertain Joshua, right? Joshua, you like soccer, right? So we're going to have to bring this soccer ball along. Can you hold that right here? Let's see. Okay, you're doing so good, Leah. Oh, we never know if it's going to rain, so we need to get our, our umbrella. Okay, how you doing here? You okay? Do we have any more? Maybe we should put that right there. Okay, one last thing. Oh, some entertainment on the hike. You ready? All right. Okay, you're set. You are set for a hike, right? Let's see, can you walk, can you walk to me? Okay, walking? Well, that looks, that does not look like fun. How about, you know what, why don't we take some of this away? Because we don't need all this to go on a hike. We don't need all this with us. This is just gonna weigh us down. But there's one thing, there's one important thing that we need on this hike. And I didn't bring it with me, but I'm going to go grab it real, real fast. Because one thing that we need when we're walking is our water, right? I'm going to bring that. You want to drink the water? You're probably thirsty from all that. There you go. You want some too? Okay. No. <laughs> all right, have a seat, Leah. Um, you know, when we go on hikes... We don't need to weigh ourselves down with all that stuff. We really just need to bring water with us. That's the important thing to stay hydrated, right? You know, and God, that's right. He's always with us everywhere we go. And the man in our story this morning from our reading, he had a lot of things. He had a lot of things that he wanted to take with him through life. But Jesus said, just come follow me. Leave all your possessions behind and sell them to the poor and come follow me. And that is exactly what we would have wanted the man to say. The man had a hard time with keeping all these things. And those things, the more that, that he carried, the more things that we carried, they just, they just weigh us down. But when we realize that we have God, that's something that gives us freedom. Because you know what God gave us? He gave us his son, Jesus. 
and through our baptism, we can be reminded that this water gives us forgiveness and the gift of the Spirit. And that's something that helps us go through life with freedom. So I want you guys to remember that. You don't need all this stuff going through life. All we really need is Jesus. All right, will you pray with me? Let's pray. God, sometimes in our lives we burden ourselves down with whatever it is, if it's possessions or, or other things that, that we may think we need and we can't leave behind. But Jesus, you are the only thing we truly need. In you we have freedom. We, just, we pray this prayer in your name. Amen. Amen. Okay, you guys can go back to seat. Thank you, Leah, for your help. Thanks, guys. And we'll continue with the singing of our hymn.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You know, I've been on countless numbers of, of youth retreats and mission trips over the years as a, as a DCE, and uh, most of them involve a 15 passenger van. Maybe you've been in one before, uh, filled up with people, which leaves the, uh, the difficult, interesting task of trying to figure out how to cram the luggage in. It's often like a game of Tetris when you're, uh, you're, you're figuring that out. And, and you, but you, it makes us realize that you can't bring everything with you. There's essentials that you can bring along, but, but you can't bring that PlayStation or that, that hairdryer. That's the, those things just won't fit. At some point, you have to set boundaries on what these essential items are and what you have to leave behind. But on a a certain mission trip that I I took a group to, uh, Pine Ridge, South Dakota, and I thought I'd do something a little different on this trip. I wanted to challenge our group to leave their cell phones behind for a week. Now, this, this wasn't... This wasn't for them to, uh, to make more space in the van. What I was, I was hoping was just to see if uh, this group of teenagers was, uh, was capable of walking away from their devices for a week. Just unplug. You know, to make, make room for, for spending time with God. To make room for each other. And for the people that they would be serving. And sometimes, isn't it true, you just, you just need permission to unplug. As you can imagine, I received a, a little bit of pushback from, uh, from this request. From, uh, a little bit. From, uh, from, from students and, and from parents. They were worried about uh, how they were going to get in touch with each other. Even though I, I, I comforted them, let them know our leaders are going to have their phones, they're going to be fine. Some students were, were worried about how they're going to keep their Snapchat streaks. Uh, they wanted to know, how am I going to post my mission trip photos to, to social media? And, and a few of them even told me, I can't live without my phone for a week. It was simply one of those things they weren't willing to, to leave behind. You know, oftentimes for me, my cell phone ends up becoming a glorified extension of my hand. Even going to the next room, I've got to pick it up and make sure I have it with me. Something I'm not always willing to to leave behind. But some of you might, might welcome the permission to disconnect, to leave that behind, to have some time away and to, to unplug. But guys, if it's not a phone, It's going to be something else that you're not willing to drop and leave behind. Something you you just can't live without. Something that's a part of you and you're not willing to let it go. Now, it might be a, a certain possession that you have that you treasure. Something that you consider to be priceless because of its significance in your life. For some, it might be a, a close relationship, some, some person that you value or treasure, and everything else ends up taking a back seat. Maintaining those connections becomes your absolute priority. And even for others, maybe it's just the comforts that you, you go through on a daily basis, your routine. The things that you you value above everything else. Guys, these these are all good. But our possessions and our relationships with people, our routines, they're only good if we recognize that they're gifts from God. These are not ultimate things to be exalted above everything else. You see, in our our gospel reading today, we hear about a a man 
who catches Jesus uh, as he was setting out on a, on a journey. And he kneels before him and he says, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? But before addressing this man's question, Jesus focuses in on one word. The word good. And this word that this man used to describe Jesus, Jesus wants him to understand what that word truly means. Because this word does get used in a lot of circumstances. Describe a lot of things. Maybe you, maybe you have a, a good dog because their house is broken. Maybe you have a good mechanic, right? Somebody who is dependable. Somebody who is trustworthy. Maybe you have a good neighborhood because your neighbors are friendly and they're welcoming. But this man calls Jesus a good teacher. And in response, Jesus asks him, he says, what, why do you call me good? He says, no one is good except God alone. And then Jesus starts rattling off a list of commandments, a checklist, as he defines the good life. And as he goes through this list, the man feels like he's done a pretty good job. Do not murder, check. Do not commit adultery, check. Do not steal, check. Do not bear false witness, do not defraud, honor your father and mother, check, check, check. I mean, so far, he's got to be feeling pretty good about himself and his track record up to this point. But as good as he thinks that he is, and as he's kept this com he's, these commandments throughout his life, there's something that he's just not willing to leave behind. You see, for this man, it was his possessions. Now, out of love, Jesus gives him an invitation to drop everything and to follow him. But the thought of selling off all that he had spent his whole life gathering and giving to the poor was just something that was too hard for this man to imagine. He couldn't live without the things that he had gathered. You see, this man had made an idol of his possessions. And suddenly, what Jesus said made a lot of sense. No one is good except God alone. You know, in the, in the large catechism, not the small one that you've maybe read a lot of in uh, Confirmation, but in the large catechism, Martin Luther talks at great length about the first commandment. The first commandment, thou shalt have no other gods before me. And Luther <clears throat> describes a god in this way. He says, it's something in which the heart trusts completely. You know, as creatures, we're naturally dependent beings. We all rely on something or someone to sustain us and get us through life. Each of us was born with a, a God-shaped void inside of our hearts because of our sinful nature. Daily, we seek to fill this void with the very things that we can't imagine living without. And the more that we cling to these things of this world to fill that void, the more we end up just feeling burdened by the amount of gods that are piled on top of our personal altars. See, I want you to hear me clearly when I say this. These Things, these possessions, these things that we value so much, they are good gifts from God. But they are no substitute for the Almighty God, the Creator who made heaven and earth. He alone fills that God-shaped void 
inside of our hearts. He alone grants freedom, the freedom we so desperately want in life. You know, it's still, still one of my favorite movies to this day. Uh, Braveheart tells the, the story of a, a 13th century Scottish uh, warrior named uh, William Wallace. And, uh, and he's, he's fighting on behalf of his fellow Scots in order that they might uh, be able to experience freedom from their oppressors. It's probably the, probably the first movie I remember um, crying watching. Uh, and I still, I, I know the, the, the point that always gets me uh, misty-eyed is uh, towards the end. You know, William Wallace has been captured by the, the English forces and he's being tortured. And they, they tell him, we'll, we'll show you mercy as long as you cry out for it. And that, that crying out of mercy would, would signify his, uh, his dependence would signify his submission to their authority. But with his dying breath, he says this. He says, and maybe you can hear him saying this. I'm not going to say it as dramatically. But he says, they may take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom. See, as we ponder the ways in which God has blessed us so richly, How might we echo this statement to keep things in proper perspective? They may take away my reputation and my good name, but they'll never take away the identity that was given to me at my baptism. Now, this certain a certain presidential candidate may threaten to take away the great nation I love, but they'll never be able to take away my citizenship in God's kingdom. The hurricane may have taken away my home and possessions, but it can never take away the home that God is preparing for me to live in with him for all eternity. So there's an important question for us to ask this morning. It's, what do we do with this invitation to follow Jesus? Do we hesitate? Looking towards our idols, which which only provide momentary satisfaction? Or do we follow Jesus and his lasting promises? I mean, consider how Jesus gave up everything to come to a world that was so broken with sin. He left his throne on high to dwell among a people who had fallen so far away from him because of our selfishness and our pride. But Jesus' love for you is so deep that he couldn't bear to be separated from you. You are his precious creation. And he shares the riches of his kingdom with all who receive him by faith. This this good news still rings true for us today. His message points us away from ourselves and it turns our eyes to the cross as our only true hope in this world. You know, many, many rejected the message that Jesus came to preach. Instead, choosing to cling to their personal idols of comfort and security. You know, they betrayed him. They abandoned him. They mocked him. They beat him. And they crucified him. This is, he was our only true priceless treasure. You know, his only possessions that he were left with were the the clothes on his back, and even those were gambled away, leaving him with nothing. But nevertheless, his heart remained focused 
on the will of his Father, and on his love for each and every one of you. See, Jesus came to earth, leaving his heavenly kingdom, so we might share in his eternal glory. After three days, he was risen from the dead, and and with this new life comes an everlasting treasure that, that he now lavishes on us. It's not a burden. It is immense freedom that he now gives us. Jesus lives. He is our treasure beyond compare to cling to. And he now invites you to follow him, casting off all of your idols and living in this freedom. You see, we don't, we don't have to wait for Christ to return for us to live in these promises. You know, many of you are living this out as you're walking alongside others who have been affected by the recent hurricanes. I saw it myself just the other day when I came into the fellowship hall. All the flood buckets, the hygiene kits of people, this outpouring of love and support for people who are in need. Some of you are even housing people who have been displaced. And others of you have even left your homes to go be with people and provide support during this much needed time. There's so many ways right now for us to to follow the call of Jesus and walk alongside others who are in need of our help. You're giving up your personal space. You're leaving your homes. You're you're emptying your resources so that others might experience this heavenly treasure. And the goodness of God, which flows through his son, Jesus, and into your lives by the power of the Holy Spirit, this is something that you can't live without. This is essential. So may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Open up your hearts and your minds in faith in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.
We join together in our profession of faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, which is found printed on the bottom of page eight. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds. God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God wants all to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth, to abide in him by faith in his word, and to pray for yourself and every condition of people. Lord God of hope, your people cry to you because you have promised to have mercy upon us. Grant to us wisdom to hear the voice of your commands and faith to grasp hold of the voice of your promises in Christ, that abiding in him we may be saved and be brought to everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God of hope, keep us from trusting in our own works or merits and open our hearts to the voice of your word. Bless those who preach your word to us and those who serve us for the sake of Christ, that we may walk in Christ and not fall away because of unbelief. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God of hope, encourage us in time of trial. Strengthen us before temptation and humble us against pride and arrogance, that we may rejoice in Christ and fulfill our baptismal calling to die to sin and rise to holiness of life and speech, glorifying you in all we say, think, and do. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God of hope, help us to live amid the war, violence, hate, and injustice of the world without becoming like it, especially we remember those in Lebanon and the Ukraine. Guard those who govern in this and every land, that listening to your voice, they may labor for the good of all people. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God of hope, we turn to you for healing, comfort, and peace in all the afflictions of the body and mind. Especially, we remember this day, those who are recovering from hurricanes Helene and Milton. And we remember Claudette, Tri, Randy, Steve, Olivia, Rita, and those that we remember in our minds and in our hearts. Restore them to health according to your will and grant them faith and patience so that they may endure through the day of trouble. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God of hope, with mercies new every morning, you continue to bless and sustain us. Give us generous hearts that we may supply what is needed for your church and the work of your kingdom. And we give you thanks for the partnership between Bethlehem Columbus, Good Shepherd in Gainesville, and all saints here in Blairsville. Uh, to meet and minister to the needs of those in North, Western North Carolina as we share with their, them in their need. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God of hope, give your blessing to the schools where our children learn and make those who teach 
faithful in their calling, that we may learn what is good, right, and true according to your word, and be kept in this faith until the day of Christ's return in glory. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God of hope, give unity to those gathered around your table that we, we may receive the communion of Christ's body and blood with repentant hearts and confident faith and equip us by this sacrament to serve you faithfully and to love our neighbors as ourselves. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God of hope, we recall the saints who lived and died in Christ and we pray you to bring us with them to the day when all shall be complete and we shall be yours together, no more divided by time and space, but one in heaven forevermore. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the singing of the hymn.
Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. Amen. Amen. Now go in his peace and serve the Lord. <laughs>